In today's adventure, we're going to explore all the different places you can sleep when you live in your car. Hello, my name is Victoria Rose. I live in my 1998 Jeep Cherokee XJ out in the west, not really having a destination or goal, which I um, kind of want to change that. In this video, I'm gonna do something that I really wanna do and really don't wanna do. Number one, I booked a little treat for myself because it's something that I've been wanting to do for since I've been out here and just, I always want to do it. I grew up riding horses. Experiencing horseback riding in the West would be really cool and I haven't done that yet. I'm in Tucson right now and I can't leave because I'm waiting on a package from a sponsorship. And the only way that I can get mail is by sending it to a certain location and then waiting because I don't have an address. So I've been waiting for this package for the past week and it's still not come. And I can't leave the city until I get it. And I, I can't afford a hotel. I've expended my stay here and I can't afford any more hotels. I can't leave outside the city because that's like an hour and a half plus in gas and then I have to come all the way back. So I'm, I'm very frustrated with this and I'm gonna have to find um, some sort of parking lot, either Cracker Barrel or Walmart to sleep in and I prefer not to do that. Stealth camping or whatever. I'm fine doing that at rest stops, but when it comes to like establishments, it really freaks me out. And I think I'm gonna have to do that tonight. I'm just dreading it, I really am. I have slept at Walmart parking lots before when I lived in an RV, but I think sleeping in your car in these types of parking lots. Ugh, really excited to horseback ride. I'm very excited. And I also booked this because I haven't been around animals or people lately. So I think being around both would be good for me, even though I'm feeling out of practice, a little anxious. We're going to override the anxiety because life is what you make it. Absolutely lovely. Um, usually I wouldn't go on horse trail rides because it's so slow paced and you know it's just not as stimulating as it could be but the reason that I went on it for this time is to number one do something new. I think that's so important and I'm trying to figure out my life right now. If I don't do things that I wouldn't normally do or new things then I'm not gonna be able to make the right decision of where I want to take my life or what changes I want to make and I don't know how I need to change until I see what a changed life is. But again like being around good vibes and horses and nature is very important and I'm trying to restructure my brain to not like be so anxious. Overall it was just a great experience and I'm glad that I did it. I need those good vibes because I said, no, I have to sleep in a parking lot somewhere. And I need to wait until sundown, which is in like two hours, Cracker Barrel or Walmart. These are the two places that actually allow our viewers to sleep in their parking lots. And it's just been that way for a while, but Walmart, I don't know if they do it as much. So if my sponsorship thing doesn't come tomorrow, I'm leaving. I can't afford to be in the city anymore. I shouldn't have gone on the horseback ride because then I could have paid for a hotel. But you know, sometimes you have to choose your priorities. Beat around people though, it just, I do still feel a little awkward. My life needs to change. People scare me. Like sleeping out in the wilderness, whatever. The people that are sleeping out there are campers, they're fine. It's the people in the cities that scare me. I go to bed nowadays at like eight because I get up at like five or six. <laughs> okay, so apparently, this is it. This is the Walmart and there's an overflow parking here. The problem is, is because of these decals, I can't, it's really hard for me to, look so greasy because I am. It's really hard for me to stealth camp because of these Jurassic decals. So if, it makes me really nervous. I know that I'm not famous enough to warrant like that, but you did the odd person, you never know. And that really, Creeps me out. Let's get into today's sponsor, which this is not the sponsor. I'm having problems with shipping. It's a different one for TikTok. So let's thank the sponsor for this video and then we'll see if I can stay at this parking lot tonight. Today, the sponsor, Lifen Wave Toothbrush. This is my other toothbrush I had, but I'm gonna show it to you because it's really gross and I, I needed a new one. So Lifen sent me this toothbrush. It has technology that they only had in robotic arms for the first time in a toothbrush. So I thought that was cool and fitting. And it has a 60 degree oscillation 
which is what dentists recommend for really clean teeth. It has oscillation and vibration combined. This is the toothbrush. And a good feature for me is the flight mode that it has, which you can just throw it in wherever and it's not gonna turn on while you're traveling and stuff. This is, I put my all my stuff in this bag and I can just put the toothbrush in and it can you know mix in there and it's not gonna turn on. There's three different modes that you can use. It comes with three brush heads, a cord for charging, and it's magnetic. For me, I like this toothbrush because of the design and since I travel all the time, it's easy for my toothbrush to get dirty fast. So these brush heads are only $9.99 for three. So big shout out to Life and for sponsoring this video. You can click the links below. Now let's get back into today's video. I can't tell this is a bad idea. There's signs saying no overnight parking, but that is up at the Walmart. I have an app called, it's called iOverlander, and it, um, it has spots where other people have camped and, and tell you if you can camp there or not too. But I don't see any RVs in this parking lot. Nice sunset though. There's just security just everywhere, which is good. I mean, if you're not wanting to sleep in the parking lot. This person right here, the van, they finagled their way in the back and they covered up. I'm assuming they're spending the night here. It is getting darker. I'm really tired. It's my bedtime right now. There's a person over here though that's sitting in their car. It's always real vulnerable sleeping in places like this. Like this is the most humbling and I would be more keen to do this if I had a van or something, but sleeping in your car, it's just, it's, it's very humbling. And I guess this is the experiment if I get in trouble or not. If I had a van or an RV, I wouldn't feel so uneasy because you just stand up and be like, hey, can I help you? But when you're in a car, you have to like scr scramble up to the front and be like, eh. and you're, you're just like all like <laughs> scrunched in there. Like, eh. <laughs> I don't know how to describe it, but like, I'm so tired. It gives me hope though that this person is sleeping in their van. I'm going to attempt to get in the back finagle soon. It is an art form, nimble and flexy. Basically, it's getting through this crack and, and um, scooching into the back. It is switching locations from the front to the back. You don't want anyone to see you. You almost have to just jump, just leap into it. Like you are not sleeping in your vehicle in the middle of a parking lot. This person in the van did it great. This other person sitting in their car is waiting each other out. Who's gonna jump into the back first? Oh, the things you must learn to become well equipped and skilled at. I've been sitting here waiting for my time for the jump in the back. But it is harder than you might think. For I have an accumulation of materials piled in the back and have to make a scramble to cover my windows before anybody sees. Quick scramble. There's pressure. I'll go very quickly to my neighbor here. Glance back. I'm gonna get in the back. It is humbling at its finest. Just the back. Now the secret is to nimbly cover up all the windows so no one can be none the wiser. Although well, this person over here is definitely wiser. We've been waiting it out. I'm gonna cover my windows now. So now we just wait, um, well, I try to sleep. Um, and we see if we get the knock on the window. I'm, I'm gonna keep this very bare basics, just gonna wash my face, put on a little moisturizer, and just try to sleep and get up as soon as the light comes up because when you're camping like this, it's not like it's a fun place. You know? I'm gonna try to cozy in. And fun little fact, you can still brush your teeth if you have like uh, a water bottle. Cause I can spit into here. In all honesty, not too bad. I didn't sleep well, but didn't get bothered at all. Um, Okay, we made a little shuffle back to the front, a little pop-up. Here I am again, wriggle out of the back, caterpillar into the butterfly type of deal. Well, I, I was up at like five or something, but it's seven now, so I like to lay in bed, which I shouldn't do. Whenever you're camping like this or car camping or living in your car, 
it's best not to stay here too long because you you don't want to ruin it for everybody else so we're gonna get some coffee now success i'd say <laughs> like i'm surprised it went really really well so i mean i shouldn't be surprised people do it all the time but i'm a timid girl good Yuki we we climbed all the way up this mountain sometimes when you're dispersed camping you'll look at sites online and the coordinates and when you get there you realize something's closed the road's closed or something and in the mountains it happens a lot because it's cold it was really hot down in Tucson it was getting into the 80s and 90s so I'm like wow I'm just gonna try and climb this mountain and I wasn't going to but my sponsored package still did not arrive and I need another free place to sleep so I'm like, I'll just do dispersed camping, even though it's a long drive out. And it felt like forever because we're going up the mountain the entire time. Lo and behold, the road was closed. So fortunately, um, it's always good to have a backup plan. So like I found this on Isle Overlander. It's just, um, it's a trailhead parking lot, but that's perfect because maybe in the morning I can do a quick hike. It's crazy how you can, you know, you can be like, oh, I'm really hot. And then just go in the mountains like two hours up and you're too cold. <laughs> but this will do for the night for me to sleep at. Tomorrow I am leaving. I'm leaving Tucson, whether I get the package or not. If it does not arrive by tomorrow, I'm leaving. But this did give me an excuse to go up in the mountains, which I don't typically like to do because it is a climb. I always get concerned for Yuki when she's like going uphill for a really long time. We're here and the views are incredible. It's nice to, I, I have to be forced to do everything because I'm just like, oh, it's too much work. I'm very lazy. Also, it was really nice today. I met up with some friends that were passing through. They have a channel called Handbuilt Cars and they do videography and car stuff, which is really cool. So it was really nice to socialize. It's just, you know, sometimes finding a place to sleep is such a big ordeal <laughs> and it's just a lot to think about sometimes. Did the old scuttle back much easier whenever you're not being watched in a Walmart parking lot? And don't forget the respect. These parts are marshaled by Marshall Victoria. It's not glamorous, mostly ever. <laughs> if I had a, a really cool rig and I had the whole pop up top and everything, I'd feel pretty badass. But I do not feel badass in this situation, which is okay. I'm okay with that. It's good for the ego, killing of the ego. <laughs> some golden berries today for a little treat for myself. I also got something else that I absolutely love. The only one thing I like about being in the city is that they have a lot of Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, uh, natural grocery stores. Baby bananas, I love these. They're so good. If you haven't had them, I highly recommend. They're like dehydrated little bananas. So I'm gonna get my bed all nice and ready and made. And I'm quite glad actually that it's not too hot because I'm getting pretty good at sleeping at under 30 degrees temperature. But I prefer to sleep in the cold. Like comment below if you'd rather sleep in the warm or cold. I think people who wanna sleep when it's like hot are weird. I need it to be cold and I need to have a blanket on and preferably a thick blanket, not even a thin blanket. I know, I know, I know what you guys think about my boiled egg habit. And also I've had some comments from people like, your diet is so packaged, blah, blah, blah. It's better than a lot of people's diet, okay? I can't cook things often. In this lifestyle, again, it's everything has to be incredibly convenient. <laughs> and I think I do pretty good. I always like to have some sort of fruit, whether it's apples, bananas, oranges, and I put them in my bowl. Someday I would really like to have a better setup. But when it comes to stealth camping, if you're able to sleep in your car and lay flat, it's great because you can kind of sleep anywhere. Sleeping at places is expensive. Spending 80, 100, 150 dollars for one night in a hotel, it's expensive, it's luxurious. To me. Big bag of green mix. Coffee for the morning and some mints for good luck. I can wash my little face and put my little head down to bed. Good morning. I cannot say that was the best sleep I've ever gotten. It certainly was not by any means. It's terrible. I don't normally get the best of sleep in my Jeep. We're gonna go and do a nice little hike now. I'm right on a hike trail, so it's convenient. Have a little bit of coffee. It's like gonna be in the 60s up here, but down in Tucson, it's gonna be in the 90s. So we have to go back down there today. 
the air feels beautiful up here. I'm not even tired anymore. Gorgeous. And if you're wondering, this is Mount Lemon, right outside of Tucson. Yes, that is largely a product of our expectations about what it can do. In one study, student weightlifters were given a shot of a bitter-tasting liquid, which they were led to believe contained a high concentration of caffeine. In reality, it was a dose of decaf. But they still managed to increase the number of extensions by around 10% above their previous limit. Savagely hot right now. Uh, the package never came, and I'm I'm not waiting anymore. It's in the 90s today. It's just it's gonna get hotter. And time to move on. You know you have to cut your losses sometimes, which is very unfortunate. Can't force things. Probably should not have chosen the hottest time of day to drive like four hours through Phoenix, which is even hotter than Tucson because Tucson is at an elevation. Wow, this angle's nice. The heat is on. I can't continue on my journey because it got too hot. And my phone is not working and I need the GPS. When I say that was the hottest drive that I've ever driven, I think I'm pretty accurate in saying that. And I had to stop at a rest stop because it's too hot for me. <laughs> like my eyes are just, the sweat is just going into my eyeballs and making them burn. So I'm gonna try and get up super early in the morning and finish the drive upward. We're sleeping at the rest stop. It's really hot in here, it feels like I think I've compared this before, but that rhinoceros on East Ventura when he's in the rhinoceros. It's sweaty like in there, and I'm going to have to yeah, sleep in here. So I just want this day to be done. I'm going to get up super early and beat the heat and get out of here. Good morning. It finally cooled down last night around like 12 or 1. I was finally able to sleep. And now it is 6 and I need to drive before the sun it's too brutal again. It's incredible, I've never seen a rest stop where every parking lot is full of people sleeping in their vehicle. I've never seen so many people actually resting at a rest stop like that. Usually rest stops, it's like completely empty at nighttime. So I found a camp spot. It's called Bloody Basin. I'm so tired. I need to take a nap. I have not slept. <laughs> I feel like for days. Finally got out of Phoenix. We're like right in the middle, close to Prescott and Sedona area, like right below there. It's only 10 something, but it feels like this day has gone on for a long time. and the temperature is perfect. So I'm just kind of hanging out. I feel like I've shown you guys all the different ways that I sleep. <laughs> I definitely, definitely need to wash my hair. I want to climb out of this basin now and see what I can see over there. I spoke and I listened. You said to go to Jerome, Arizona. So I did. I stopped in here before we get to um, Sedona because apparently it's a cool little, another mining town like built on the side of the mountain. So let's go check it out. So 
So I'm standing outside the world's biggest kaleidoscope shop. I just stumbled right into it. It's really cool. Here, because that light behind you. Oh, yeah, light in there. Perfect, right there. It's wonderful. Oh, my God. is absolutely amazing and it's said to be a sister town of Bisbee because they're they're mining towns it has really cool vibes what an amazing little town to visit it's mostly a lot of art boutiques and then there's a lot of mining history things a lot of wine I'm going to try and find a free camping spot around this area to sleep tonight so let's see what we can find so I found this camp spot, but there are a lot of other RVs and stuff around. I found a hike that I'm going to do today in around Sedona. As you can see, it's quite crowded here. We have places to be. One thing I have to say that I hate about Sedona, there's just so many people. It's just so difficult to do a simple hike. You cannot find parking. Like I'm parked here on the side of the road, like on a slant which is fine and quite normal in these circumstances, but I hate it. Like this is a Monday. That is the expense of the beautiful places in the world, unfortunately, whatever. So I stopped at the natural food store, which another thing I hate about Sedona, it's so expensive. These were on sale and they were still 8.30 for a bag of little chocolates. But I think these would provide me with a lot of energy. I wanted to get something I could take on the trail with me. They have Manuka honey in them, which is re really good for energy and then dark chocolate. It's basically just Manuka honey, 99% cocoa dark chocolate, and coffee. That's the only three ingredients. It's so gorgeous when you're driving in here. It's just awe-inspiring to see the canyons again. Yes, there's a reason these places are always packed because it's absolutely stunning. All right, I'm going off trail now. Off-roading, human style to find this subway canyon. Look how amazing this is. Very busy. Lots of people here. Pretty cool. Pretty worth it, even though there's a lot of people. A few things that I've noticed, being an avid hiker that I am. Number one, I don't see many single people hiking. It's usually groups or couples. I rarely see an individual hiker. If you want to get socialization in, go to a popular hike because the amount of times you say hi, which I think is a pleasant thing, saying hi whenever you're passing by someone, and this a smile goes a long way. But it's a lot and also if you're going to a hiking area where you do some climbing or it's something kind of a little more stimulating and difficult you're going to be kind of chatting with each other and waiting on each other so you get more socialization in that way as well now even if you don't like to socialize it's passive socialization if you want to hate people less realize you're all kind of doing the same thing nobody wants it to be crowded in a place they're just there for the beauty of it just like you are you're doing the same thing you're there for the same thing even when people are taking pictures and videos you know, you do that too. So just realize that you're all having the same experience really. So hating people for being there. I'm talking to myself, by the way. It doesn't make any sense because you're there. I'm really tired and I should stop for groceries, but I don't want to get groceries in Sedona because they're expensive. It's not been fun trying to find a place to sleep tonight. Like I. Like the first spot, it took me, the GPS took me all the way to Flagstaff and then was trying to take me all the way back and I just don't have, I didn't have time, I'm tired. It was like an extra two hours and I'm just like, no. So I tried to look up another spot and then the road was closed back there, which happens quite often. And now I'm trying to go to the third spot and I'm praying that this spot is one I can sleep at because the sun's gonna go down in like half an hour. And I'm so, I just got so tired all of a sudden. I just wanna sleep. <laughs> wasn't what I was expecting. It's gonna get below freezing tonight, which is fine. It's gonna get below 30. We're um, in the forest. <laughs> I didn't want to get out of the canyons, but I think I'm just gonna, I don't know. I think I'm just gonna go up to Utah because I've spent enough time in Arizona, I think. 
Thank you so much for joining me on this adventure of finding weird places to sleep for free. At the end of the day, it's like the amount that I'm paying in gas to get to these places and just time, you know, I might as well just buy a hotel, but it's not, I, I, so it is beautiful out in these places though, so I'm very grateful. Please stay tuned, I guess, to extraterrestrial. Goodbye.